But for today purposes, I think I will just, in my general remarks, I think for the first part it's a speech general remarks, I hope not to take up 20 minutes because it's quite boring, 20 minutes is too long, unless you are a person like CN who can really uh, quite jovial, quite rejuvenating. But I'm not that kind of character. I come from the civil service, not very. I also from a civil service. But you're out longer than me. So uh, I hope you don't mind if I take less than 20 minutes because I don't want to really bore you. But I will just concentrate on two aspects of the finance minister's speech uh, in my general remarks. One is about his comment to, to build a stronger society. All right? And the other part is his comment about, um, let me see, uh, developing towards a first-rate developed society. These are general remarks. Uh, it has also relationship with what I have written paper about the economy and all that. And I think we can leave to the, the details later on that part two. But coming back to stronger society, um, <coughs> He has, the finance minister has given you a lot of uh, giveaways, a lot of uh, cash grants, uh, the first part cash grants, handouts, and the second part is the what he calls social investments, top-ups, education, medicine, and all that. Um, there's one point, just a distraction. Actually, all these top-ups, the way they done it is, is like an IOU. It's not cash to you. I owe you, but they take cash from you to top it up. So in return, the government give you an IOU in your CPF account, but they take cash from you up front before you can qualify. So for, for, for somebody running a business, that's a very good strategy. Take cash from you before, and I owe you something only when you're sick and use it. But that's, that's a minor distraction. Um, to the expect about a stronger society, he has given you a lot we can debate whether they are sufficient, whether they are generous. They are obviously more generous than in previous years and we know why they do it at this time. More generous this time, maybe they are nervous, so they give you more. Uh, so, we can debate. And whether they will really build a stronger society is something uh, we do not know until after it is over. But I know for sure that all these measures will be overwhelmed by two countervailing forces at work in the economy. And these two countervailing forces will work to weaken society, not strengthen society. And the first countervailing force is your foreign worker policy. And the second one is your casinos. These two aspects are the mainstay of Singapore's economic policy under this government. They will continue to allow foreign workers to come in. They are moderated because MM said there's disquiet, so we are bringing it down. After election, maybe they will pump it up again. We don't know. Uh, I'm sure being politicians, they will do it this way. They will appease you because they're quiet, but after that, they will go back to their bad ways again. Um, how would this weaken society? We have lots of Singaporeans are not averse to having foreigners. In fact, we have learned to live with foreigners all our life, right? Right. Uh, it's, it's not that we are anti-foreigner, you know. Uh, that's where they got it wrong. Neither do we fail to appreciate important contribution made by foreigners, yes, but they come too fast uh, and <coughs> the quality is suspect. And they upset us, they have, in the past, they have stayed in construction sites, in the factories, matter of fact, they have now gone into the other sector of the economy, into the services sector as a cleaners. Uh, yes, there's a place for them, you know, but they are coming too much and they more move more into our society, into our neighborhoods as well. And that will be a destabilizing factor for our society, which will weaken us. The second part is obviously the casinos. Uh, you have read about, you know, the the aspects of how they break up families, reports, the latest one being an um, army captain who has to end up working for the loan shop, lost his wife, lost his children, lost his house, lost everything. Um, 
I brought my family on a holiday of the West Coast in the U.S. just last November, December. Of course, Las Vegas was included in the tour. And I was told I heard either from a tour guide or from a fellow uh, traveler that in Las Vegas, one in five family has a problem gambler. <coughs> Are we moving towards that? Remember, this <coughs> is a city very close city where access to casinos is so easy. You talk about two thousand dollars, it's nothing. You divide by three hundred sixty five days is less than ten what? How much? Six dollars a day. It's nothing. Of course you don't go every day. Let's say you go every weekend, fifty two weeks. Each weekend, each week's forty dollars. It's nothing, you know, for two thousand dollars. It's nothing. Forty and if you go Saturday Sunday it's only twenty dollars. So it's nothing and that is why you find that the visitors to casinos, they, when they introduce a levy, they expected that it will, um, only about 10% will be Singaporeans. But what is it now? What do the facts show now? I think about more than 40%, close to 45, 50% of our locals. And we are already starting to read about our friends who have broken fam whose fam who have broken their families. So is it what we want? Obviously people at Dao say, Oh, you know the dangers, you should have you know, you should know about yourself. But why should why should why should the government facilitate this access by making it so it's so easy? <coughs> the level is nothing to a gambler. Less than six dollars a day. What is six dollars after this round of increases? What? Maybe two plates of half with So that's it. Whatever you do, whatever you do in your budget, are they really going to strengthen society? If they do, what are these two forces? You have left two key pillars of the economic policy untouched. Foreign workers, casinos, they will continue to be a mainstay and they will weaken society, destroy society and break up the society in time to come. <coughs> develop, the next point about uh, developed society, I thought we are already a developed society. You know, MM is very proud that we have switched from third world to first world. I think more than 10 years ago. So why are we uh, waiting, this finance minister said that we are taking major steps to enable Singapore to be a first-rate developed society a decade from now, 10 years from now. Where are we now? Are we not a developed society? <coughs> if we are first-rate, well, we say well, we are not yet first-rate. So what are we? Are we third-rate developed society? So we are a developed society, but are we behaving as a developed society? What steps are you taking to develop to, uh, to be a developed society? Let me give you some statistics. Somebody mentioned that uh, the health expenditure, ah, see you mentioned health expenditure has gone down, right? Yeah, I think so. Bremer uh, or Bremer? Bremer. No, I know, just now you were talking oh. privately. Uh, you mentioned about when you check which one has gone down, right? Oh, uh, the, the big thing. Ah, uh, this one, about yeah. health. I brought this paper along. <laughs> health expenditure has gone down by 0.6%, 4.1 billion. Health. What does this mean? Government has health expenditure has gone down. So they have recovered more from you. They are very proud. This cost recovery, they recover more than 60-70% from patients. Uh, he mentioned this um, ZN mentioned that government spent, yeah, I look up the Ministry of Health website. They said they spent you, they were inviting suggestions from the public uh, for their budget and they put on the website, I was doing this in my paper, so I went to the website and they said spent 2.2 billion dollar subsidy, I think 40 plus percent of budget. So 2.2 <coughs> billion, we are, we are a 200 billion dollar economy, so it's about 1 percent, you are right. 1 percent, which is low by other countries are selling much more, you know, what, uh, 5% uh, more. But we, 
In fact, the developing countries are spending more than 5%, and we, a developed society, <coughs> is spending only 1%, and we are bringing it down to, uh, we are reducing it to 1%, uh, and they consider subsidy. It is total government expenditure, $2.2 billion, you know, and it's government expenditure, they consider subsidy, <coughs> which means to say the minister's of health salary of $2 million is a subsidy. So they increase the salary to $10 billion, <coughs> so the, there's an increase of $8 billion dollar subsidy to the public. Can't be, is it? Do you get my argument? They consider government spending as subsidy, total. So, well, even salary, increase the salary, increase subsidy. So that's one point. But the more important is that we are lagging far behind other developed societies in key indicators. I think I did it in my paper, I did some research, you know. What are the key indicators? There are, we have only 32 hospital beds per 10,000 population. For every 10,000 people in the population, we have only 32 hospital beds. And this is only half, you know, in high, in, I got this figure from the World Health Organization report, WHO report. They give you, they divide various countries into various groups, and we are in the same group as high-income countries. So, the average number of beds in high-income countries is 58, 58, but we have only 32, and we are in the high-income country. Other indicators are, we have 17 doctors per 10,000 population compared to an average of 28 doctor, doctors in other high-income <coughs> countries. Uh, they have 81 nurses, we have only 53. What kind of a developed society are we? You mean we will reach them there only in 10 years? So that's one. There are, uh, there are other statistics. I hope that uh, the finance minister will take this into account. I mean, what kind of a developed society are you like? Are we really not really a developed society? And why do we wait until 10 more years before we even enjoy uh, this, this status, you know, this status with all hospital beds, schools and everything. There are other aspects as well. Read my paper, but I'm not selling them. 